Hello, welcome photographers. This is Sean with CirclePix. And today we're going to be covering the basics of how to shoot HDR images. Now, I want to use a PowerPoint during this presentation, and I don't want to make this overcomplicated at all. I want to make this as easy as possible. HDR photography, what is it? It's high dynamic range imaging. It is a set of techniques that allow a greater dynamic of range between the lightest and darkest areas of an image. We're going to be exposing areas of a picture that usually might be too dark to see. That's what HDR does. It takes, picture, takes care of areas in a picture, and it brings out detail. And some people really like it. And we're going to use this as a selling point for you to help get more business. And we know that agents will choose HDR images sometimes. The agents will have a choice. They'll be able to choose if they want an HDR image or a virtual image. Now, regardless of those choices, all front shots are going to be done in HDR now. It just gives a nice looking picture of the front and a really clear blue sky. Um, that's what we're going for. More choices, help business, help your agents so they can be happy. Okay? I have a few examples here of photographs that I want to show you before we really get started how this kind of works. This is our first picture. You see, the purpose when doing HDR images is to get one good looking picture, and that's this picture that you see here. And then we want one overexposed image, that's what you see here. And then we want one underexposed image, and then we want to bring all three pictures together into an HDR image. It really shows a lot more detail, and people are happy with it. Now, I've got a few notes that I want you to take here. Using a tripod is a must. Your camera, it has to remain still. You can't have movement in the pictures. You can't have a car driving by. Uh, things need to be still. Okay? All three pictures need to be exactly the same. Now, you can take these pictures quickly. It, it only takes a couple seconds between each picture. Um, the wind can be a factor. You, you don't want to shoot in stormy, windy weather. You normally wouldn't anyway, but if you have a lot of trees moving and things like that, it could be a problem. So pay attention to that. Uh, here's just a picture of a camera on a tripod. Uh, like I said, you'll need a tripod, and the piece that connects your camera to your tripod is this little gray plate. Now, if you don't have this gray plate, you can get these separate from a camera store. Uh, or your tripod head has a bending mechanism. If you have the head from CirclePix, you can loosen this right here. And if your rotator is attached to your tripod head, it, it just can move to the side. And your camera can remain attached to your rotator, making it easy to, to keep your camera in one spot and to simply take these images. Now, uh, moving on for actually how to do this. You'll want to have your camera on A mode. That's aperture priority mode. When you're in aperture mode, you can select the f-stop. Now, a good f-stop to start with is f8. It's a sweet spot on a lot of these uh, lenses that you all have. So that's where I want you to start practicing this. F stop 8. Once you're there, you need to have your exposure compensation on 0, 0.0. That's usually a good looking picture. So you'll take that picture, you'll make sure that it's good looking, and then you'll overexpose the image by changing your exposure compensation to a plus 2.0. And then you'll underexpose the exposure compensation to a minus 2.0. So here, I, I just want to circle this on your camera, is A mode. You're used to shooting in P mode. We're moving the dial to A mode. And then we're changing this with this little wheel here. We're changing it to A mode. Okay? This is an example of what it looks like when it's at 0, 0.0. Here's an example of what it looks like when it's at 
plus 2.0. Here's an example of what it looks like when it's at minus 2.0. So you take all three of those pictures, then we put them together, and we've got three images that are the same, but they're at different exposures. And like I said, when we put these three images together, they can look really great. Here, here's a picture of a cannon. For those of you that have Canon, you can see that it's the AV button on the Canon camera. It always will have a plus and minus. No matter what camera, I've always seen a plus and minus button uh, on the camera because this is an important feature for photographers. Uh, on the Canon, you'll start at zero, then you'll go to a minus 2.0, then you'll go to a plus 2.0, and that gives you the three pictures that you need. All right. Uh, if you have a, a little bit uh, different camera, oftentimes cameras will have these bracketing buttons. With the bracket feature, this pretty much handles and takes care of HDR for you. You set your bracket up to bracket three images. You set it up to bracket by two stops, so it will do a zero, it will do a plus 2.0, and a minus 2.0. All you have to do is change the shooting mode to uh, rapid fire, and simply hold down the shutter button, and it will snap three pictures for you. Okay, that's how that works with the camera that has the bracketing feature. Now, here's another example. You don't have to be at f8. I'm just encouraging you to use that as a starting point. This picture was taken at an f16, I believe. Here's the first image. Here is the second image, overexposed. Here is the third image underexposed, and we put all three of them together, and we have our HDR image. Not that it's important, but look at this detail in the pool that came about. Let me back it up. I mean, look at the detail. Um, look at the detail in the mountains up there. I think I have another one that enhanced a little bit more. Uh, there, there's the, so we can play with these things a little bit once we get them. But that's HDR right there for you. Very easy. Here's an inside shot. This was done without a flash. Here's the first image. Now what I want you to see is the, the tile work and how this comes, comes about to look like an, a nicer image. Here's the second image. This one's overexposed. We're exposing some of these areas that we couldn't see before. Here's the underexposure, which is really bringing out the detail in the tile. And then we put all three together to make a a nice looking warm image with a lot of detail. This is why we're, we're working with these HDR features. Uh, people like them and we want to help you give your clients more of a choice. Here's the last set of instructions for some guides for you. A lower ISO is better. If you have a high ISO, you could wind up doing a reshoot. A lower ISO is best. You see, if your ISO is turned up to 800 or maybe even 400 at times. That would introduce too much grain into the picture. When we put all three pictures together, very grainy. Doesn't look clear. That's why shooting at an ISO that's lower is better. Okay. Your white balance, you can start by setting that to auto. Now, here's a night shot. You can do night shots exactly the same way. This night shot here, here's the first image. Here's the second image, here's the third image, and then we put all of them together, and we get a lot of detail in the property. We get a lot of detail in the brickwork. The sky looks good. That's, that's how it's done. Here's another one, another night one. Practice these. Get out there and do it. And please, if you don't know how to upload these images yet, watch the videos that are recorded on this uh, YouTube channel page that are for uploading PixTip, HDR images, and bulk uploading HDR images. But thanks for taking time to watch the class. If you need extra help, call your photographer manager, call me, set up an appointment. But pleasure to be working with you.